Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Today we're gonna to be doing an HTV project. So, what do we see here? We see overcut HTV right here on my desk. This one comes with, um, I believe it was with the Easy Press and the Easy Press 2 when you buy it. Uh, it's your first project. It's a glittery uh, green C and it's overcut, right? There's nothing sticky. You press it and then you peel off the carrier sheet. The Easy Press 3 comes with this HTV overcut Cricut in it, right? So it's so funny because, you know, I've had an Easy Press 1 and an Easy Press 2, and then now I have the Easy Press 3. Um, I had this for a long time, and it never occurred to me to cut it on purpose like this, right? Um, until maybe a few months ago when I had to do a project and I realized overcutting on the HTV was going to help make my life easier. And then it got me thinking, what else can I do with this? And that's how I came up with my HTV hack for intricate mandalas. This one would take hours to weed, but when you overcut, what happens is you peel it off. All the parts that you would have weeded stays on your green mat. Um, I mean, it's amazing. The owl project that I did, uh, Steph did it too. As some of you guys may know who she is, Steph Crafter in the Rain. Um, she said that owl took her, I believe, an hour and 50 minutes to weed. And it took me about five minutes to weed. So, does it ruin your mat? It's just like cutting cardstock. And I have an example for you right today. Um, but, there is a second reason why you should cut this, and it's not for every project, okay? So the thing is, these hacks are good to have in your toolbox when it applies to your specific project. You should use it, right? But it's not gonna apply to every HTV project. In fact, if you did it for every HTV project, you would probably never wanna do another HTV project again, because it doesn't always work. But, all right, pull this aside. Let's pull out, this is the project that I did recently using the second reason for this hack. So we're gonna talk about that in a second, but let's peel this off. So what I did was, I have a cloud mandala, which is the one that you saw on that cinch bag right now, and I overcut it, so I cut it on glitter cardstock setting. That's gonna vary depending on your blade and on, and on your machine. So glitter, car, <laughs> glitter cardstock setting totally works for me. All right, so this is what happens. I'm gonna peel this off. And what's nice about this project or the doing it this way is this is totally usable. This is just HTV scrap. I can put this in and use this part to be cut again. It's not sticky, everything is good. Okay, this is the piece that we're doing. So I'm just gonna bend it a little bit and see all the parts that stay on here are all the parts that we would have weeded. This one is not that intricate, but I don't like to weed. So, you know, I'll use it whenever I can. All right, this part, you just take your scraper and scrape it off. It literally is just like cardstock, except that it's HTV. Okay, so I'm gonna put this aside. This right here still has the carrier sheet on. It's just like this and this, okay? It's really easy to, to peel off. So what you would do is you would follow the steps on your heat press, uh, the heat press app, if you have the new Easy Press 3, or you could just look at the heat guide online, um, is after you press it, depending on the type of peel, warm peel, hot peel, cold peel, you would just bend it a little bit and then peel off the carrier sheet. Exactly the same. The only difference between what I just did now and what we've been used to doing is that I overcut. I cut it on glitter cardstock instead of an HTV setting. All right, so let's talk about my hack. So you're not, like I said, you're not always gonna wanna do this, but in this case, if you can see that, first of all, I drew out my, 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 project and this is so that I can lay out my project and make sure that it's picture perfect so this is my project I overcut each one of the colors of the rainbow and I'm gonna I'm just gonna put it down and we're gonna tape it together now when I did this project originally for the easy press 3 promo um, I pressed it all at one time now I would not recommend that 
because it took a couple of tries. <laughs> um, what I would recommend is maybe pressing it in two or three, um, three, three presses. That is still an improvement over what we have here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We would have pressed this in the past seven times. If I can cut it from seven to two, I think it's a win. Um, if I can cut it down to one, which I have done, it's kind of nerve wracking because everything has to cut perfectly. And um, sometimes the plastic or the carrier sheet overlaps just a little bit because you didn't get a clean cut and that's gonna make it uh, troublesome because then your HTV from another color is not pressed onto your shirt or your cinch bag, but it's actually pressed onto the carrier sheet of another color. So you don't want that. So in this case, in this project, there is enough room in between the colors, as you can see here. So I would press all the colors and then press the cloud. So, or press the cloud first and then the colors. But um, what you wanna use for this is you can use your heat resistant tape. So what you would use with um, for the hat press or um, for infusible ink, like your mug, um, you can use it for this. So I'm gonna keep this in place. I'm gonna just put my hand down to keep it in place. And I'm going to tape through like this. Okay. So yeah, it's, see, and it all goes together. So it's so awesome, right? It's like, it's so funny. We get used to doing something the same way over and over and over. And in this case, I feel like it's very practical. This is, I would be worried about pressing on a cinch bag, right? This is, these are the kind of sensitive materials that we get worried about. So you don't have to, you know, you can press it um, in fewer presses. So, all right, I'm going to press it on a shirt today. So here we go. I'm going to pull this up. Let's get my mat down. Okay. I'm going to pre-press it. And my press just turned off, but it gives me time to... I mean, give me one second. I'm going to log into my heat press app. What's nice about the heat press app, and I, you know, I'm going to do a separate video on actually my thoughts on the Easy Press 3. Um, what is nice about the Easy Press 3 is if this was my first Easy Press, it would be amazing because I don't like to read directions. This gives me just enough information to make sure that my project goes well. All right, so this is 50% cotton, 50% polyester. So when you connect to the heat app, which I realize you can't really see right now, I'm gonna see if I can scooch this down a little bit more. Okay, so here's my Easy Press 3. I'm gonna click my material, my material, I have a mix. I have glitter and I also have regular. I'm going to put glitter iron on and then I'm going to do cotton poly blend. And so click next and it'll tell me everything. You want to preheat the blank for five seconds, press for 30, flip and press for 15 seconds and then peel cool. And um, if I send the settings to easy press, what will happen is it's updating right now. But when I send it, and my heat press is on, the temperature and the time settings all go into my easy press. So every time that I hit the go button, it will then, it will press first my preheat and then it will update the time and the settings for the actual press. And then after I hit go for that, it will update and do the flip and press temperature and time. So it's updating right now, which is fine. I'm just going to press the, okay. It needs to update before I can do it. So like I was saying, I love the Easy Press 3. It, but if you have the Easy Press 2, then, then you've used it many times. The app is really, really nice, but it's not necessary to upgrade because the actual machines, other than the Heat Press, uh, the Heat app, there's nothing really different between the two machines. So I would not upgrade it. Sorry, I'm turning it back on. Okay, it's turning on. Um, I would not upgrade unless you just had money to burn. <laughs> the other thing that I heard is a lot of people um, like to match all of their crafting 
uh, supplies. So if you like this light blue, and I forget the color it's called, it's, it, it, there's a specific name for this light blue, but if you wanted this one, this one will also come in the mini. The mini is gonna be exactly the same as the mini heat press that we have from before, which I normally have on my desk and I don't have it today. But um, nothing changed except for the color. So I just wanna be upfront, but you know, if this was my first press, the Easy Press 3 is great. It's, I do recommend the 12 by 10, then you can do sublimation projects. Um, it's just super easy to use. So, all right, I'm just gonna pre-press this really quickly. All right, I know I'm not really following, <laughs> following the rules, but I've been doing this. So, all right, let's put this down. This goes, right? It This one has the protective carrier sheet on there, so you don't need the Teflon. But when I go to press my white one, I'm definitely gonna put the Teflon on to not burn this piece, okay? Um, so, all right, I've got this down. I can't, so here's the deal. The way this project is designed, I mean, again, this is totally up to user preference, is if I don't have it totally going up against the cloud, I could press this right now. Actually, none of the colors are touching. It's a white t-shirt. For me, this can be pressed as is. If you want this cloud to be right up against the colors, I would press it on my second press. Again, if this is normally, this would have been a seven time press project. We're going from seven to two, I think that's great. Seven to one, we could totally do that as well. But if you're gonna do the seven to one, I would move this just a little bit. And in this case, it's not gonna matter. It's a white cloud against a white shirt. No one's gonna notice. So it's just up to you. Um, I'm gonna do it all on one. <laughs> all right, so let's do this. Uh, hold on, oh, you know what? I didn't send my, let's send this. Let's see, it's supposed to be um, 30 seconds. Oh, 30 seconds at 3.30, okay. So here we go. And I put all this down and go. Um, it's a heavy machine. I don't know if you guys have this. Let me zoom out for a second. Okay. Um, it's pretty heavy. It says light pressure. Um, what's nice is your app right now. It will also tell you where you are. So apply light press pressure, press, and then next it'll remind me to flip and press, which I never do. Um, I know. I've. All right, so it's done. And oops, so you see it updated 3.30 to 15 seconds now because your flip and press is gonna be 15 seconds. Which I'm gonna flip over and I'm gonna press on this side. Okay, so here it updated, flip and press, light pressure, nine seconds left. So it's, you know, it's nice. <laughs> Everything's done for you. I wouldn't have read the directions. I didn't before. That's probably why I didn't know that we're supposed to flip and press. Um, you know, I'm sort of like just a go and do it kind of thing. Okay, so now peel cool. It says slowly remove liner when cool to touch. So what you can do, what I've seen people do, is just give it some, uh, a little bit of air to cool down. I can touch it. All right, so let me show you what that looks like. So when you pop it, I would just, you know, pop it up a little bit, and there's the liner. So um, I will say from, you know, getting to know HTV a little bit more, um, you should not be washing this for, like, it has a cure time. So just like when we do um, adhesive vinyl, and you don't wash it right away, this is the same thing. It needs to adhere, it needs to cure time. So, um, you know, don't wash it for, if you can, if you're not last minute and doing something for your kiddos. <laughs> um, I would give it, I would give it at least two days. But a lot of times, like when I'm making this, like we don't get to it, so it just stays in, stays there without. So here's my liner. It's actually really cool to be able to use this as a stencil too. So let me put this against here. So, oh no, that's not a good color. Can you see it against this? You can see that more. 
it's kind of a cool little template, little thing, stencil. All right, so this one, pop up. Um, this has tape, we'll just pull off the tape. So the other thing is, sometimes because the way I'm pulling this off, I almost feel like I wanna press it for like another five seconds just to make sure that it's all good. I know, I get, I just, with HTV, I get so nervous because you're washing it like in the washer, like it's not hand wash and all that good stuff. So anyway, I might just press it one more time. <laughs> but this time, I'm gonna put my Teflon sheet on top. So let's not do it on my self-healing mat. Let's do this. What is that? Oh, okay. Well, it's gonna come off. All right, I do it for just one, two, three, four, five. All right. Then we're done. We have our shirt, and look it, it's beautiful. Um, this one was more complicated with the letters. But you can see, I mean, it's a cinch bag. Like this material is crazy. The pretty, um, you know, metallics and the foil and the glitter, all of that. And it didn't burn the project. I mean, it's stinking cute. All right, I hope that was helpful. Let me know what else, what, what else you wanna see. Comments, questions, I'm here for it. See you guys next time. Bye.